<laughs> One of my favorite cards ever. All right, guys, so here we are in the round four feature match of our Star City Games Invitational Qualifier at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. We're right into the action here. On the left is Steve Weimer playing a big Naya deck. It's basically uh, Naya good stuff for all intents and purposes. The low end of things like Loxodon Smiter and Boros Reckoner. Voice of Resurgence, which you just saw there. And then he applies Reach with cards like Domri Rod and Thundermall Hellcat. His opponent is Aaron Daly, who's playing at Mono White Humans. Trigger that champion. What's funny is there's a literally a box of dice right next to them <laughs> that they always ignore. Brave? Is that a brave? It's a brave or a face shield. He plays both. That looks like a face. It's a face shield. See, here's a like I love Brave the Elements, but I don't know how much I like additional to uh, face shields. But uh, Aaron loves that card, and basically the way his deck works out is he's got like like 29 creatures and then six Brave the Ele Element effects. So if you're all in on creatures anyway, you might as well play the best. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's the white counter spell. So Voice of Resurgence token replaced by another Voice of Resurgence. see what Aaron's follow-up is to his turn two Boros Elite. The, the best card in Aaron's deck, I really feel like, other than Brave the Elements, is Silverblade Paladin. And it, in any any game where he gets that on curve and it's unmolested, it's just very difficult for his opponent to deal with. And there is the Imposing Sovereign. Going to pump the champion. Now the question, I guess, is does he want to serve in with the champion and possibly trade it for... You know, the, the front half of that Voice of Resurgence, because I imagine Steve would be content to double block there, and then you have to choose... Well, no, you double... If you attack in and Steve double blocks, that's a total blowout, because you assign two damage to the Voice and one to the token. No, I guess there's never a point at which the token is a 1-1, one, one, right? Oh, yeah, it is a 1-1 one, yeah, one, one point, because it's a trigger being a stack. Yeah, interesting. So Steve on the all shock land plan here. Absence Pilgrim coming into tapped because of the Sovereign's Blind Obedience type effect. And now Aaron's got uh, Battalion activated here. We're going to see a Riders of Gavney naming... Uh, the token is an elemental, right? You have to read it. <laughs> and the... What yeah, is, the token is an elemental. I'm pretty sure the voice, voice is, is an elemental, elemental too. too. So pro-elemental. He's going to serve in for a billion. Yeah, voice is an elemental. So the writer is obviously naming elemental, allowing him to serve in with everything. We get battalion trigger off the Boros Elite. So that's a smooth nine damage there. And, uh, and see, this is one of those points where if Steve isn't playing some kind of life game, which he's not he's not playing drag tasks, right? Not the main deck. He, he does have scavenging use, so I guess he can potentially gain one life here. But, you know, Aaron Daly is just one bring the elements away from just ending this game. Mm -hmm. He just falters, gives everything pro green, and gets in there. It'd be interesting to see if that's exactly what happens. He does play four of them. Aaron Daly loves himself uh, Brave the Elements. And this is exactly what I was talking about with Imposing Sovereign. Get in there. Boris Reckoner isn't that good against creatures when it's tapped. The spelling is correct. Amazing occasion. Oh. Steve. He talked about the Steve's name. Yep, that, has, that is how he spells Steve. I'll allow it. <laughs> oh, Aaron has a faith shield. He plays a precinct captain, which is going to pump his champion here. Face shield on the um, champion, giving it pro green. Serving in with everybody. So he can't block the champion, and he can chump out two of the other creatures with his tokens. Right? No, they're all... He can't block anything. He can block... Oh, the, hu the human is the only one. Yeah. Addison's player is a human, so... He can, he can block three, but he's going to take... He's going to take uh, 
three, five, ten. He's taking ten no matter what. So it looks like Aaron has game one in this. It literally doesn't matter, I don't think. <laughs> Steve's trying to find a way out of it, but he can't. <laughs> I don't think he can. Both the Gavini and the Boris are... That's the one he gave Pro Green to. There he yeah. is. He got there eventually. So Aaron takes game one in this off the back of, uh, more than anything, just in a pretty impressive curve. On the play, nice curve. And that's what his deck wants to do. He doesn't have too many shenanigans, really. He just plays dudes and piles in. So we'll take a look at the deck list here and see what these guys are bringing in from uh, Steve's deck. We've got uh, that two. first card right there. The first card would be Unflinching Courage, which seems like to be a, a severe like mirror breaker in this like aggro uh, matchup. He also plays two Bonfire of the Dan, which I imagine would come in as well. Mm -hmm. We see... Uh, I think that might, might be all he brings in, because uh, I don't really know what he wants to take out. He might take out a Boros Charm. I'd say the Arbor Elf. He has one of Arbor Elf. He has one of Boros Charm. He's got a... And then, uh... Five cards total. Maybe... Hmm. Interesting to see what he brings out. Huh? Sideboarding. Yeah. So the bonus... It's also interesting, interesting to notice here. It's a 61 card list. Oh, well, that is interesting. Did not notice until just now. But obviously the uh, bonfires are coming in. Those were the two cards that I saw him pick up. I would imagine some number of unflinching courage. Maybe he doesn't bring in all three unflinching courage. Maybe he just... But I would think that the weaker cards in uh, in uh, his deck right now are the Selesnian Charms, the Boris Charms, and he can't afford to take out the fifth mana dork, which is the one of Arbor Elf. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be the five card swap you do there, but he might leave the Arbor Elf in because his his high end may be where he wants to get to a turn, especially on the play. A turn yeah, on the play, you might want to leave that in and just just leave one of the unflinching courages in the board. Because a turn two Smiter in this matchup is very very good, and, and uh, we saw in that case uh, Gavin, uh, Riders of Gavney being pretty good, but uh, it's not going to be very good against uh, Steve's list in most games since I see what. Uh, a minotaur, a wizard, a human, an elemental, an, uh, lock, an elephant, uh, a dragon, a beast, and an ooze. Yeah. So I don't think he has a redundant. Brought the whole zoo. Yeah, I don't think he has a redundant one. Then we'll look at uh, we'll look at Aaron's list. I'm gonna have to go and give Aaron Aaron props for having the best handwriting of anyone in this <laughs> tournament. Very neat. This is very uh, well assembled. So he's got uh, three oblivion rings. He's got two frontline medics. Uh, and, and he's got two safe patches. I don't think he'll bring the safe passage here. He does have uh, one renounce the guilds. I wonder. We didn't. I wonder if he'll bring that in. It that does, seems really good. It's, well, it hits uh, Smiter. It hits Domri. It hits Voice of Resurgence. It hits Reckoner. Seems like the the best removal spell he can play. <clears throat> uh, and then it'll be interesting to know if he th if he's he thinks to bring in the frontline medics. You know, because a frontline medic against the uh, if only as a delayed counter spell against Bonfire is yeah. probably worth running in there. Um, and then what he would take out, he could pretty much take out anything he wanted to here. I would imagine some number of the uh, the four drops, the Riders of Gavany, would probably come out. But I'm not sure how good Dahlia is in a aggro matchup. Because I don't think he's showed him any any removal. He didn't show him any removal in that game, though he has, he has a... He doesn't have a reasonable amount. Yeah, I think Thalia would, could probably come out too. So I think he could take out three Thalia... And then some number of uh, Darren's playing. Or Aaron's playing a couple of Celestial Flare main too. I'm not sure if that's where you want to be necessarily, but we'll also got to give him props on the cheapest mana base in the room, the 22. 22 planes. 22 planes. That's, uh, that's actually free, as you can just <laughs> dig them out of every draft. To, it's like down in hometown where you normally play. They just have that. It's not even really a box anymore. Last time I was down there, the, the, the basic land box on the back table had just turned into like a basic land pile yeah, all over the yeah, table. lots of piles. Piles of basic lands everywhere. <laughs> so you just go over there and get your, whatever you need for your draft of the day. So, Question in the chat. No Mutavolt in his mono uh, nope. white humans list? No, he does not have Mutavolt. Which might, uh, it might be a card availability issue. 
Um, but I think it's just he prefers not to. He does have some double white in his uh, his list, and he does uh, he does have some sp between precinct captain and um, between precinct captain and uh, silverblade paladin. He does need to hit double white very early in the game. Plus, he's only playing 22 lands, so he can only really afford to play one or two Mutavolts anyway, because you really don't want to be jamming four Mutavolts into a 22 land deck if you're trying to cast double double white spells. He also can't afford to keep a one land Mutavolt hand, too, which is kind of brutal, because he can keep one land Plains hand. Oh, also, another question. No Thrag Tusk on the board that I saw. From the Naya deck? Yeah. No, he doesn't have Thrag Tusk anywhere in his list. He doesn't have any creatures in the sideboard. All, he had, well, his Rurks are, which is clearly not coming in in this matchup, but uh, he has two copies of Chandra Pyromaster. Is this a list? Does this look like somebody's list that, he, that, that has been played in something recently? I'm sure it's parts of it. I know that the, uh, the Pyromaster Planeswalker has been seeing a lot of play as a, a one or two of in main decks, and then a, very heavily coming out of the sideboard. Just as a, it's pretty good in these aggressive decks because the falter ability can't be overlooked. Yeah. Just like shooting a a mana dwarf down is good, but being able to ping a thrag tusk, make it, you know, falter it, and then get in with your, yep, with your offense is, is something you can't overlook. And four mana instead of five is a big difference. Yes. And then you have the uh, the gravy of occasionally being able to equivalently draw a card off the top with the zero ability. I think Chandra really is only good in decks like that that can take advantage of the tempo of being able to falter something. I don't think it's... it's, it's we talked about this last night a little bit on our FNM stream about how the problem with all the red planeswalkers is they desperate, everybody desperately wants a red planeswalker that just goes in every red deck, yeah. and they've never printed one. They only print ones that go in like these big controlling red decks, or like the cost that goes in the mono red only beatdown deck, or Tavault that goes in the garbage. Yeah, and the trash can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With the turn one mog something. <laughs> turn one mog something? Yeah, turn one mog something. <laughs> if it's not a mog fanatic, it belongs in the trash bag. So it looks like Aaron is going down to five cards here. Of course, he's going to be on the draw, so he'll be able to uh, deal with this just a little, a little bit better than if he was on the play. But still going to be at... Uh, resources going to be at uh, premium for Aaron in this second game as we tip over the 400 viewer mark. So... New records uh, all around. Can I stream myself watching your stream? I think that's the only thing that we... I think everyone should be doing that. Yeah. I think there should be... Streamception. <laughs> Streamception. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting thought experiment in the chat from CBJ14. How bad does a one-mana Planeswalker have to be? It would have to be very bad. First of all, probably only have like two abilities, no ultimate. And it'd probably come in with one counter. <laughs> Loyalty at one. Yeah. Yeah. Loyalty at one. And it has a minus one and a plus one. Pl yeah, plus one, put a one drop into play. One one for one in play. <laughs> minus, uh, minus one would be give target creature minus one, minus one. I don't even think from a, uh, from a, uh, like, conceptual basis, I don't even know if that's something that could happen in one man <laughs> Planeswalker. <laughs> So we're back to the action here. Steve on seven cards. Aaron mulling down to five. Steve with a turn two Absence Pilgrim because he's on the all Buddy Lands mana base for this game. So missing some tempo, but Aaron on the on the draw and mulling down to five has not put on the nearly amount of pressure that he would normally put on. So not in the worst spot here. And there is a uh, voice of resurgence. Supposed to, yep, there we go. And another Buddy Lands. And, yeah, the Anistrad land base coming into effect here. <laughs> Not where you want to be against the humans there. Yeah. And there's a precinct captain. Now the imposing sovereign is a two one, right? So he yeah. can't he can't offer in because I think Steve would be more than happy to trade his wow. mana dork. Unless he has a unless he has a Thunderball or something here. But but that being said, we know he doesn't have a land that comes into play untapped unless he just drew it. Mm. Or he's like the biggest well, like poker player in the world. Well, to be fair, if he had it and he had a five drop, he'd want to play the the check land on three so that it come, you know, because yeah. he can shock himself. Bonfire, Bonfire for two. For one. For two. Two. Mm -hmm. So he's going to clear out uh, Aaron's board. Oh, okay. The pilgrim. I didn't see knock him down to uh, eighteen. Eighteen's a piece. 
because of the shock land and then followed up with an attack 4-2, knocking Aaron to 16. The next to Balt will be a one cost. I hope not. I hope there's just not another to Balt. To Balt's art was really cool, but he's not a good magic card. Yeah. He's one word away from being playable, and that word is random. Yep. If there was just a button you could push that says loot, like you would yeah. never stop pushing it. No, no, but no. when it says random, you'd be yeah. like, forget it. There we see a Slayer Stronghold. I didn't even take a chance to look at the uh, utility lands in Steve's list. He's running one Gavin and one Slayers. You're exactly right. There's a Dom. Are you going to get rid of that? Uh, he's going to fight the Sovereign? Nope. He's going he's gonna to look. I think he's some Mortars. Pretty good spot to be in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess there's an argument to be made for attack in with your voice of resurgence. If and he trades, so be it. Then you play the Dom and look for the card. Otherwise... Uh, you could play the Domri. You got into two damage from the attack. Then you fight. Then you get the token. And yes, 93, that is the problem. As it is with most Planeswalkers not named Jace. Yeah. And uh, Usman in the chat uh, mentioning that apparently in design, he was originally designed to be a, a just a strict loot, but that was just, he determined to be too good and said that it was put at random. Which I, which I believe, because I think at two mana that is too good. But that's also what would make him playable. Yeah. <laughs> Also, both of his, like, like mini ultimates aren't very good. Like, yeah. Stormseeker and, what's the other one, Insurrection? I think so. And let's be real, after uh, after the Mind Sculptor, Wizards isn't going to print any too powerful Planeswalkers. <laughs> it's the Umazawa's Jitte you got, effect. you, you got to start, if you're going to print one, you got to err on the side of it being bad. So what we saw here was an activation from Domri fighting between the uh, Absence Pilgrim and the Imposing Sovereign, but Aaron responding with a face shield likely naming green. Wah, wah, wah. Stuck on two lands. I'm not sure that's where he wants to be. Who, Aaron? Yeah. If his opponent has five lands, a dom ring, and he's been bonfired, and this, and he's still at 16 life against a voice of resurgence, I think Aaron's in a pretty good spot here. Are we attacking Steve, or are we attacking dom ring? If we're attacking dom ring, I like this a lot. If we, uh, he moves it into the red zone. Because he was, he was mentioning last night at FNM how he always forgets to use the red zone in the bat. I actually don't like, I don't know how many people actually watch the uh, Pro Tour streams they do. Mm -hmm. But I miss the old playmats that were designed like that. Mm -hmm. Now they're just the Pro Tour playmats. But I miss actually having a the red, red zone. zone. Well, they're mid-combat. Uh, Aaron casting Celestial Flare, making Steve sack. A blocking creature, so the voice goes to the van, he gets his elemental token. So, we'll see what Steve comes up with here. Plays a Sacred Foundry tabs. He can serve in for three here if he wants to Slayer Stronghold his token. He's going to look for a creature. Oh, that's brought up a good point. I think Steve missed a voice trigger on the Faith Shield that was cast during his turn. Oh, he did? Yeah, he should have two tokens. Good call. And that being a, uh, this being a competitive REL event, if they both miss it, yeah, it's just the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet Aaron didn't even, I bet Aaron doesn't even think about that. Because that's normally a thing that you worry about with counter magic, mm -hmm. and I don't think his deck, his deck only has a few, uh, There's a Gold Clan Rampager. It's going to be a very difficult card for Aaron to deal with. There's Brave the Elements. It's going to save from the bonfire. Don't these inner taps. Hey, can you... Other than that, those creatures that are tapped. No, no, never mind, never mind. They cast them last turn, I guess. Also, no. I'll do it. Oh. Oh, 
So a little sloppy here. On the, yeah. That's that's one way to put it. It's actually pretty cool. Like this draw hasn't been very good for Steve in that he's his mana base started with three buddy lands and then and they followed up with shock lands. Yeah, but to be fair, Aaron has uh, a Boros Elite, so <laughs> so Steve not under the most tremendous amount of pressure. And with an active Dom Ring, which is... Uh, I guess it's going to untap and get a double lightning more. Did you want to draw two lightning? Like voice. And two red lines. So cast a voice. Activate Slayer Stronghold. It gives it Vigilance, it gives it right? Vigilance. You tell him, can you remind him it gives it Vigilance? Vigilance. Uh, I will take this opportunity like I take every time when something like this happens to remind people that they don't this have their... Yeah, yeah, this is not the Pro Tour. Also, everyone watching doesn't have someone filming every game they play of Magic. Do you know how many mistakes I make in the game of Magic? At that tournament that I top aided, the one we played it with the winner box, uh, previously in that tournament, I uh, I activated a Liliana, both this card, uh, against an opponent that had one card in their hand, and I had a slaughter, I had a Rakdos return in my hand. And he said, well, you discard yours? And I said, yep, sure do, because I'm bad at Magic. <laughs> But that wasn't on camera, so I, uh... Why did he, why did he put his planes in the graveyard? <laughs> you don't have to sacrifice your planes. <laughs> Today's prank out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the... That's just a funny one. I, I think... Steve's never going to play on camera again. I, yeah, I do feel bad a little bit. I, uh... I think this is just a case of people being overwhelmed a little bit by the, uh... Did he also just block a uh, Faith Shell on his turn? And he didn't get the uh, token? Yeah, he's missed his token a lot. <laughs> so, for comedic value... <laughs> it's also nice that we've we've had, like, three rounds of very good magic so far. All the, all the games had some very interesting lines. So one bad round is not terrible. But it is the round <laughs> that... The, it is the round that the most people are watching. Yeah. And so. the round you expect the uh, 3-0 and 2-1 players to be uh, playing at top tier? Uh, one is 3-0 and one is 2-1. Does that work? Does the fight ignore... Yeah. It, it ignores it, it, first strike? First strike is just combat damage. Okay. So things like Death Touch and Life Link are uh, whatever... The Triggers. Damage. Yeah. But first strike is... First strike is exclusively combat damage. damage. Yes. Uh -oh. I agree with you, Monkey Punch. You should know how your cards work. But the truth is that uh, some players don't. The uh, Twin Boros Reckoner comes in and obviously taps the second planes right here. <laughs> Voice Richards. I think these guys were discussing an intentional draw, so at this point I'm somewhat hoping that that is something they decide to do at the end, because... Uh, uh, yeah, I think that the loose play is contributed to their... It's still better than cutting your grass. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm sure there's something you should be doing instead of watching this. But this uh, this big Naya deck is actually pretty cool. Um, I really like the idea of turn two Smiter in this format. And obviously Voice of Resurgence is a deck in of itself. The Smiter is really good against the, uh, the popular deck in the format, which is the Red Green. So he did side in the frontline medics. Looks good here. This, yeah, the truth of the matter is, uh, George does have it right. This is FNM level. This is not a Star City Games open. Uh, We're trying to get on the oh, Star City. Yeah. Overload mortars. Ooh. You can't. You can't frontline that. <laughs> that was brutal. Because Aaron was going to swing for nine indestructible next turn. Can't. Could have braved the elements that. But, uh, Didn't. He was tapped out. Well, that sacrifice plant. <laughs> 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 
It's a silver blade palette. Silver blade. The old turn a thousand unpaired silver blade palette. It is competitive VR REL, but remember that there is no uh, no takey backsies on triggers anymore. Um, if you miss it, it is just missed. If you miss it, your opponent does get a chance to uh, put it on the stack. Which, <laughs> for voice rate charging, says never gonna happen. We get the Boros Reckoner, fight the uh, Silver Blade Paladin. We should have two damage redirected somewhere. Doesn't matter, it looks like Aaron's going to uh, scoop him up. So if that was Reckoner, fight the uh, Silver Blade, deal two to Aaron, drop him to four. Attack. Uh, Slayer Stronghold, my voice has been I'm not sure if this is a bad thing, but we got a third match. <laughs> game three, yes. Yeah, game three. I do want to uh, do a brief recap while these guys are, sh are shuffling up and look at the uh, the state of the tournament. 24 players, uh, which meant five rounds of Swiss. This obviously round four. Uh, we did have a couple double draws. Garrett, you're undefeated, right? So you... Yeah, I'm, I'm in line. There's only going to be 112 after uh, the fifth round, so I can double draw. So Garrett's playing American Control and Alec Myers playing Junk Aristocrats. They uh, They are... T Double drawing in, so they'll be part of your top eight. Uh, the winner of this match will be in the top eight, assuming that they do not intentional draw. I don't know exactly what's going on with that. Uh, we'll let yeah, them they, decide. That may be a course for sloppy pay. Maybe they're. Just I, I think strong. there's a there's I think there's a very good chance that they have intentionally drawn this match, and that they have instead just but they've played it out anyway. So we're, we're SCG top eighting this, where they always chop top eight and then just make them play it out anyway. Yes. <laughs> I think that's exactly what's happening, which, as, as you say, attributes to the level of play in this game, <laughs> in, which one, in which one player never gets their voice tokens, and the other player sacrifices his lands when he taps them for mana. <laughs> that's got to be... That's the uh, second uh, ability of Burning Earth. FNM <laughs> Low Light of the Week. For mana, blow it up. That is an FNM Low Light of the Week. Um, Let's see who else has got so, and then we've also got uh, Brandon Gibbs and Adam Vickers uh, playing this round. They're both two and one. That's the Gruel Agro uh, Mirror match. Naya. Yeah. No, uh, Brandon's on. They're Brandon's on Gruel. I thought he was on Naya, but he's on just. They both have a, a, a Temple Garden in their deck because that's a forest that uh, casts Boris Reckoner. I guess. But uh, they're just uh, just Gruel Agro, and that's the second Gruel Agro Mirror match that Vickers has played in the last two rounds. Other two win players are Joe Lewis and Jordan Petio, who are on the American Control mirror match. Uh, they're both American Flash decks. It's more more of a tempo deck. We've oh, got yes. It will be definitely pointed out that uh, the miss triggers, but, you know, you can't do it right now in the match, so. Yeah, and I guess, like, to be technical about it, you can correct that, like, as a bystander when you see something like that, if it's not a trigger, like, it's a game state thing. But you have to do so in a fashion that's timely enough that it can be done immediately, and there's no way that we could do that in a time. Not opening the door and screaming across yeah. the store. Yeah. Uh, other two in players are Aaron McLaughlin on Jund, Jacob Morgan, uh, I don't know what Jacob is playing, and then Justin Carpenter, who's on uh, Gruel, Gruel Midrange, kind of a a bigger gruel deck. It's interesting to see that there's not a lot of gen decks here. Yeah, well, Kenny Hughes is... Kenny's at Gen Con. Um, Brandon Hart is working. Uh, Max doesn't play here anymore and sold his gen deck. And... I think that's it. I think that's who... I think that's our... Onion is out of, a, out of town on a job interview, so... So what was the, uh, the Facebook post? What I asked earlier, and I got an answer, and I already forgot it. What board game was Christina Smith playing that she won $1,000 out of Gen Con? Legendary. It's a lot of board game. Congratulations to her. Yep. Second, second place in Nationals. I just remember some place where Boyd had placed a Facebook post about, man, I wish I was at Gen Con, and Christina's response was, yeah, here's all the awesome things we're doing. And I thought, <laughs> I thought that's a true friendship. Oh, you're missing out on all of this? Yeah, I thought that's oh. the... It's kind of, I don't know, like, it's kind of kind of mean, actually. <laughs> that's not as bad as, uh, just got to play against Cheerios. And Vickers responding with, oh, I guess you're going to lose your bracket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was. <laughs> so we move to game three of this possibly ID'd round four match. We do not know uh, in particular. 
But Aaron is going to be on the play. Let's see if he finds seven cards he wants to keep. Of course, remember last game he did bolt to five, which was part of the reason uh, why he did not not muster much of an offense. Or cheating, one of the two. Looks like him all getting. Aaron's hand could be so good that he says, I'll just take mine. You'll need it. I haven't seen the turn one champion by Aaron yet. It's also a question of, uh, do you leave an alley in this matchup? We're talking about that. Uh, Mike suggested that it would not be that good. I don't think it would be. I mean, he's like 20, 24, 20, 24 creatures at least. Yeah, he's only playing, uh, Steve in his main deck is only playing one, one, two, three, other than Domri's is only playing six non-creature spells. And that's assuming he doesn't sign some of them out for his sideboard cards, because some of those charms are the worst cards in, in his deck. Monzma. Naya was a color combination from the Shards of Alara block, meaning red, white, green. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm a little old school, and I call that color combination Zoo, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, what ha whatever happened to Zoo in Legacy? Uh, Tarmac Wives. Lingering Souls. Naya is an aggro deck. A mid rangey aggro deck. I think this deck that Steve's playing is the absolute epitome of mid-range, in that it is not an aggro deck, Another but it five. is also definitely not a control deck. So it is somewhere in the middle. I think in this matchup, it's going to be the control deck. Definitely. I think he's going to exhaust resources from Aaron and hope to land the Thunder. Oh, he definitely high. has to play the control role in this matchup. In the, to answer the immortal question, Aaron is clearly the beatdown. But... Uh, all of these things, all these plans, regardless of your strategy, are hampered by mulling down to five cards. I don't remember Naya Miracles ever being a control deck. No. He still has a lot of uh, typical value with, like, Domri Fight and Busy Warriors. The last time I remember a Naya control deck was, uh, pretty sure it was Shards, Shards of Alara, and it ran a Johnny Vengeant. It was a Planeswalker deck. Without uh, Day of Judgment, it's hard for a uh, like, control deck. The the closest thing to a non rat control deck uh, lately has been the, uh, the Michael Perez red black. With like it even had a and it probably ran uh, mutilate. Now there's an over. <laughs> now the chat is, is debating the over under on missed triggers for this game. It's currently set at 3.5. Going to take the over. I will take the over, and uh, I got ten dollars on it. Who wants to match? Ten dollars on the over. Does MTG bot uh... support uh, over under bets? <laughs> Did he just take six cards? Must be 18 unless no, you're from five. overseas. Okay. Then we don't care. <laughs> Pat Plains, champion of the parish. That's where he wants to be on turn one. Boom. Called it. And Steve literally does not have a turn one play in his no, deck. That's the champion of the parish. Come on. Oh, oh that's the worst. Post combat creature. No, just no follow up. It's also, it's also possible that Aaron kept a hand of like uh, theme hunters. Or he has a turn three, three lands and a Silverblade Paladin. Well, truth is, Volek, I am a giant fan of Pete Rose, so I do not care if I got in trouble for betting on Magic. <laughs> Here the planes. Oh, Fiend Hunter with a blowout. Oh, he's he's just he's just joking. We know that guy, Kyle George. No, I know. <laughs> I was joking too. <laughs> he's actually from Cincinnati, so he's probably a Reds fan too. So Fiend Hunter takes out a scavenging news, pumps up the. Uh... Aaron has a slow hand of just Fiend Hunters and like a. Banisher Priest, which is very possible what his keep was. You know, that's, that's, that's very creature. interesting to see. I have not seen a Banisher Priest come out of his deck today, but it'll be interesting to see if he 
Because I would think Banisher Priest would be better in his deck, wouldn't it? I think Banisher Priest is the replacement for Friend Hunter in formats where there's no Elish Is Elish Norn in standard? Uh, last time I checked, no. Mm. So Aaron getting the advantage of Steve taking four off his lands. Spider. Boros Reckoner. End of turn. Renounce the gills. If people holding their cards a certain way makes you ang angry, maybe you need to reevaluate certain <laughs> things about your life. <laughs> is someone upset with the way that these cards are being held? Yeah. Aaron, Aaron is very much a all in a list, like all in a. <laughs> cards like that, everyone would start holding their yeah, cards. Yeah, Reed Duke does hold his cards like a list. Oh, does he? Yes. I would much rather see that than oh, like right. trying to, could you imagine commentating Brian Kibler? You would never know what was in his hand. <laughs> he has learned at the uh, events where they stand over them with little tablets and right now he just goes like this first. <laughs> then he's... So Aaron apparently has got the all-control draw here, where he's just beating in with grizzly bears and a one-power fiend removal spell. And there is a Loxodon Smiter. So a fiend hunter wins here, right? Yeah. What about an 18th land? Boros... Frontline Medic. <laughs> Boros Frontline Medic. I miss... I miss That's not Boros Watermark. Zombie HH, please do not make a uh, comparison to any of our players to John Finkel. Brave the Elements naming either white or green. Which he named blue. That'd be, uh, but it appears like he did not name blue because uh, Steve offers up the concession. Steve there. could not know what the color blue is. Maybe Steve's colorblind. Maybe he is actually a golden retriever. <laughs> is Steve a golden retriever? Turns out no, Steve is a man. <laughs> so congratulations to Aaron Daly. He uh, picks this one up in three games.